Hello everybody, this is Josiah Hodgett at Shell Lake Schools. Today we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough of Google Forms. First we're going to create a Google Form, send a Google Form, and then we're going to review our form responses. Now the reason we're creating this tutorial video is because Google Forms recently received a significant update. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our drive. So head to your Google Drive, sign in if you are not signed in already. Once in your drive, click the new button, go down to more, and select Google Forms. You will notice that we have the old Google Forms here, which is what you may be familiar with seeing, and then there's also now a link to the new Google Forms. We're gonna go ahead and click that. It'll take us to the new Google Forms. If you are a Google Classroom user, this might look similar to you. It has a similar look and feel to Google Classroom. So the first thing we're gonna do now that we're creating a Google Form, we're gonna go up here to the title, give our form a title, so I'll just call mine Demo Form 11. You'll notice that after I put my title up here, it now automatically synced this. So now my title is here. This is the title that my respondents will see when they go to fill out this form. I'm also going to give my form a form description. So just give a little help text there to let people know the context of this form or some other expectations that you have with this form. So the first thing we're going to do now that we have our form created and named is we're going to start working on our questions. It automatically gave me one question to start working with. It is a multiple choice question. If I wanted to change the question type, I can go ahead and click multiple choice here. It gives me a drop down box of different types of questions. I have short answer, which would be a short or a small text box. Paragraph, which would be a large text box. Multiple choice, which will let me choose one of the options. Check box, which will let me choose as many of the options as I'd like. Drop down, which is similar to multiple choice. You can choose one option, but it condenses them into a drop down box. Linear scale, you can go on a scale of zero all the way up to 10, and then label each side of that scale. And then multiple choice grid, which is more of like if you think of a questionnaire or survey, similar to scale, but with multiple rows. And then date and time. So those are great for either a log or a different type of data collection tool where you're trying to narrow in the time. And then time can also be set for not just a specific time of day, but also set to duration. So those are the different question types you can set up. Right now we're gonna walk through creating a question. First thing I like to do when I'm making a question is number it. The form will not automatically number it for you. So I got my question there. You just click on the untitled question and start typing. And then it's the same with options. Just click on option one, start typing. So here we have my first question all ready to go. Got question one, my four options. And so to add an additional question, you go to this add item menu, which is floating around on the right side. You'll notice that as I click on different items in my form, that add item menu goes with me. The way it works, whatever item you have selected, in this case, question one, if you add an item, it'll put it directly below that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the question. That's the first button here. And question, and I'll make question two. So I have my question two all ready to go here. Why is the sky blue? We're gonna talk about a few of the options you can set with each question now. I can duplicate this question. So let's say I've got some similar questions that I'm building, I can go ahead and duplicate it. I can delete a question, click it on the trash can. I can also make this question required by selecting this toggle switch here. And then I'm gonna go back up to question one, make that required as well. I like that feature. There's often, well, there's not very many times I do not require a question on one of my surveys. Last button here is a few more things that we can show. We can show the hint text. That'll put a little space below your question if you want to put some sort of explanation or if you answer this, please explain that sort of thing. You can put it in the hint text. And then we can also have this option to go to a section based on the answer, which I will show you that in a little bit. I'm going to go up to question one. I'm going to add a section. What that's going to do is going to make two different sections. It's going to drop my second question onto the section two. I'm going to show you that because sections are basically like pages in your Google form. After you answer all of the questions on page one, you can hit next, and then it'll take you to page two or section two in this case. I will show you that in a bit, how that functions. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up for question one. I'm going to select the questions menu here and go to section based on answer. And then I'm going to allow them to go to section two after they answer Packers. If they do not answer Packers, I'm going to make them come back to section one until they answer Packers, and then they can go on. My demo form is now ready to be sent out. So we're going to go up here to the upper right and talk about these options. 
First one is the color palette. Currently it's set to a purple. I'm more of a blue guy myself. You can also add a different picture or theme here by clicking on the little mountain icon and then it takes you to the different themes that Google has put together here. Maybe we want more of a night out a feel. There we go. And so you can see how the color palette always pulls in and matches from the colors here. One thing about those default pictures that are available, they are sized for the old Google Forms, not the new Google Forms. So they don't really do it justice when you pull them in. You don't even see most of it, and it's pretty stretched out. So I just like to stick to the colors now, and we'll wait for Google to update so that you can change those scenes around a little better. The next button here is our preview button. I'm going to go ahead and get that going. That's going to take you over to what this is going to look like for your end users, the people who will be responding. So we'll get back to that in a second. Settings, if you use the old Google Forms, these were the checkboxes on the top and bottom sections of your Google Form. Right now, they're all consolidated here into settings. So some options here, you can either set it for anyone can fill out this form or only those within your domain. I'm going to leave it within the domain. When I have that domain selected, then it will allow me to automatically collect the respondent's username, which is helpful for identification purposes. And then also select so that I can only have one response per person, which is good for things like quizzes and exams. The next section here is a confirmation page. That's going to show a little message at the end. So we can just say thank you. And then also on that confirmation page are some links that you can submit or have them uh, available for your respondents. They can either edit their response or see the summary of responses. You'll notice currently they cannot submit another response because right up here I said they can only submit one response. And then a few presentation options as they're going through. There can be a progress bar, which is helpful when you have multiple sections. And then you can also shuffle the question in order, which I'm not going to do at this time. So save. So if we go and look at our, our form now, we can see here's our progress bar. And here's section one with our first question. We'll go ahead and hit lions. You'll notice the page reloaded, and I'm still at this question. Go ahead and hit bears. Next. Still here. Vikings, next, still here. Packers, next. Aha, now it moves on. So why is the sky blue? We have our second question here. Uh, let's see, photonucleic anthropomorphism. Sure. Submit. So now we're back at our form, and they've built it now so that it's easier to get to your responses. You can go to this responses tab. We've been working in the questions tab. We jump over to responses, we can see the summary of responses so far. So currently I have one response, so I have 100% Packers, and then I have 100% photonucleic anthropomorphism. I can turn off accepting responses. That'll lock it in so that no one can submit any more responses, which is good for quizzes, surveys that are time-based, and that sort of thing. And then here I can create a spreadsheet. That'll create the traditional Google spreadsheet in the background. That will allow me to manipulate the data, do things like run Fluberoo, to auto grade quizzes and that sort of thing. So that button's right there to be able to create that. Now that I've created that, now this is a link to go review those responses in Sheets. And then there's a few options hidden here. I can change that response destination or simply unlink it. And then I can also download that spreadsheet or delete all the responses. If I do that, it's going to ask me, are you sure? Yes. So now my responses go back to zero. So that's basically all there is for creating and sending a Google form and reviewing the responses. If you have any questions, you know who I am, Josiah Hodgett, Shell Lake Schools. Thanks.